I'm, I'm in a different world and I wanted to learn how to make a million quid a year. How did you end up in prison? First, it was fake money and they put dye in there. So whoever opens the bag, the fingerprints would be on that. From there, it was like, shut up the house. To, just to let them know that we were serious. What was the charge? It was conspiracy to blackmail with intent to use firearm. So it was no way I was getting out of it in terms of, like, I got nicked, like, just black and white. So I got eight years for the first sentence. I've done two back-to-back -back sentences. Mate, how would you not learn? Okay, this is how you make money. Like, you need more skills. You need to level up your mindset. So we're living in 2024, it's the digital era. AI is huge now. So if we sleep on AI, we're gonna miss out. You know how to take a business from 100 grand to make them millionaires. Why wouldn't you focus on doing that yourself and making you a multi, multi, multi millionaire? So today we are joined by business coach and mentor, Ibi Aslam. First and foremost, mate, how are you doing? I'm doing really well, bro. Yeah, honestly, it's been, you, you just said that, didn't you? We've been messaging for about a year now, yeah, October yeah, yeah. last year. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's finally happened up where, where we're from, up where you're made. Yeah. Uh, how are you finding the Northeast? Well, it was a bit of a short visit in terms of like where I was this morning. Um, I was in like an office. So I've not really had a chance to tour around, but you know, it seems like a nice little small town. So what I want to do is I want to just, for people watching or listening, right, I want to get straight into it. As mm. in, what do you do right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I work with small business owners. Um, initially, when I started, it was like all sort of small business owners. But now kind of I'm niching down to online coaches, online business coaches and helping them. Well, first, I assess their business and see where the bottlenecks are. Mm -hmm. And then for me, I'm huge on high ticket. So I'll help them create a high ticket or if they've already got one and help them scale a high ticket offer. That's what I'll do. So for, for the viewers who don't know what high ticket means exactly, yeah. what type of figures are you talking? What, what classifies as high ticket? Well, well, it depends how skillful they are, okay? But mainly if I can associate high ticket with one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. So if someone does one-to-one, -one, that's high ticket. Okay. That's the highest ticket you're going to get. So for example, if I want one-to-one -one with you, you would charge me a premium price. Yeah. Um, most people don't understand that and they'll just charge per hour. Mm -hmm. um, where I believe that if you have a skill and you've been banging at this for, for a long time, then you need to create a package and experience for them, a VIP package, however that looks like for the person, and then charge something like 5K or 10K, but it's over a 12 month period. Okay, so it's like monthly installments. Well, yeah, or they can pay all up front. What are they, so it, let's just say they went down the monthly installments route. Yeah. They, so month one's passed, they love the experience. What reason would they have to stick around for the rest of the period? Well, um, well, they don't, but when you do high ticket, it depends on your strategy, mm. right? So for example, let's just talk about my high ticket. So if someone wants one and one with me, first they have to put down 5K. So that's their commitment. Yeah. The rest I can do in installments and I'll work with you, you know, or you see. But um, if they want to leave after a month or two, which the chances of that are really low, especially if you've done the assessment properly and you've gone through the process, uh, no one's just going to put 5K down and not stick with, you know, whatever you're selling, right? So, mm. um, like, not many people do that with high ticket. Like, high ticket buyers won't do that. Yeah. Because it's a different mentality. The reason I ask that, Ibi, is because... Yeah. I've got some friends who run masterminds out in Dubai um, right. and in different places around the world. And they're like, they're, they're definitely high ticket as in it's a one-to-one, -one, they yeah. offer a one-to-one -one mentorship. They also do group coaching and all that type of stuff yeah, as yeah. well to run alongside. But I know the one-to-one, -one, some of the lads are paying like 15 grand a month to yep. work with these guys. 15 grand a month? A month okay. to work with these guys. And what I've found is some mm. of those guys, and, it, and that's why it's funny you said that, because I know that some of those guys are making so much money yep. that haven't even checked in yet and they've paid 15 grand. Right, so so yeah, so this is where like it's look, you can charge someone ten grand or fifteen grand, right? And if they pay that up front and they don't get the result, like it's it's gonna look bad on you as a coach. Yeah. Right? Mm. So what is really important is that you be you you assess them properly like a doctor does. So for example, if, if I'm ill and I go to a doctor, he says he just gives me paracetamol without even asking me what's wrong with me. Well, mm. well, that's a huge issue, right? So when someone, for example, comes to me, we'll assess their business, mm. first of all, right? And we'll see where it is exactly, like they'll fill in like an application form, right? Yeah. 
And at the end, I will make that decision if they need to go into one-to-one -one support or they should start off here by reading a book first or go into like a group coaching program first and then work their way up to one-to-one. -to -one. Yeah, I'm with Right? You. So it's really important that you do the assessment properly. Mm -hmm. It's not just about... But if then... Like, I've done this before with, with certain people where I'll say, listen, I just want your time. Just come and spend an hour with me. And I just want to I just want to I just, I just want to pick your head and ask you certain questions. Now, when I've done that, it's because I'm already making money in my business. Yeah. So I'm not bothered. For me, time is important. And I want that VIP service. Now, if someone's not even making 10 grand and they say, oh, I want to spend 10 grand with you. Well, then it's a moral duty for you as a coach to not accept that and be like, listen, you're not even making 10K. Why don't you go into my lower tier program, which is a mid ticket or a group coaching program, make your 6K or 10K first and then come to one to one because it's a waste of time coming and sp spending an hour with me because you're not really going to get anything. Yeah, of course. So it's really important to be clear with the mentee or the client and be like, listen, you're not there yet. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you, you get a lot of people saying, um, um, I want to make 100 grand a month, for example, or 50 grand a month. But, and they've not even made 10 grand a month. Yeah, I'm with you. So it's like, for you, as a coach, it's really important to assess them properly and be like, no, you don't need one-to-one -one because I'm speaking different languages up here. And you're not even familiar with the mid-ticket language. So go there first. Right, and then come here unless you've got like a hundred million and you're not bothered and you want me to really coach you through the whole process. But bro, like with high ticket, all it is, is up to date coaching and you want to know how I think. That's all it is. Do you think people get caught up in before they've made that 10 grand a month? I yeah. want to be a millionaire. Do you think that's, do you think that's an issue? Not really. It can be. And it, and it can't be because look, we always hear about like, if you want something, manifest it, talk about it, think about it, right? Yeah. Believe it before um, you're going to achieve it, right? So it can be a good thing, but I feel like where people go wrong is they get distracted. So they've not made their first 10K and they're thinking about how to make my 100K. Well, then you're never going to get there. So let's just focus on making your 6K or 10K a month and then we'll focus on getting to 15K and then 25K and then after that is just pretty much, it, it, it's, not, it's not really that difficult. Mm -hmm. You just have to, you know, it's not strategy, it's more you then. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure you're, you know, um, up to date with your personal development yeah, to get to you. certain levels as well. So yeah, um, yeah, so that's what I would say to that. I've got a, a question I want to yeah. ask you, right? So you get the analogy of, you go into university and you see a business lecturer. Yeah. And, you know, the question is, why would I be, why would I listen to someone yeah. who probably drives an average car? Yeah. He's a lecturer in uni. He's teaching about business. If he was good at that, he would have done that himself. Yeah. So my question to you would be, if you know all about coaching and scaling, yeah. wouldn't, you that, wouldn't you just focus on that yourself rather than help other people? Um, I don't understand your question properly. What do you mean like... Um... So for instance, if you know how to take a business from 100 grand to make the millionaires, yeah. which, which I know you know how to do, okay. why wouldn't you focus on doing that yourself yeah. and making you a multi-multi-multi-millionaire yeah. as opposed to just helping someone else? Yo, what's happening, people? If you are liking the episode so far, make sure you click the like button, hit the subscribe button, and also press the notification bell so you don't miss another episode. So, so firstly, let's just talk about me. So firstly, I'm only helping people what I've done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for example, if I'm teaching someone how to make 25K a month, it's because I've, I'm doing that or yeah. I've done that, yeah. right? So like if somebody came to me and said, Ibi, I want to make a million quid a month. I've not done that. So like, it'll be like, listen, like I might be able to help you, but I've not done that myself. Okay. So it's yeah. really important to be transparent and straight up. Yeah. Um, that's number one. Number two is the reason I got into coaching is because I know how important it is. Right, people need support. People actually need help. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like, when I I spent ten years in prison, right? Just for those that don't know. And when I came out, like, the only thing that got me to stage two and stage three was mentors and coaches. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. So I feel like it, like, the right coach can really get you from one step one to step two and step three. So, like, for me, it's all about just helping someone properly. This is why I don't believe in courses. 
Yeah. I hate courses mm. because how many times do you know someone that has bought a course but they've never gone through the course? This is what I'm a huge believer of. If you're going to do a course, do coaching as well. Yeah, 100%. I agree with so, that. So, like, I hate courses. Mm -hmm. Completely hate them. Like, I know I purchased so many courses, I've never gone through them. Or yeah. I'll go through half. So, but co coaches know that. Real coaches know that. So, yeah. like, why are you doing courses when you know people are not going to go through them? Give your time. Give coaching. Charge more, a premium price, because it's your time. But give them up-to-date info. I think a lot of... People who create courses, though, just want a quick book as well. 100%. Because they know that it's there. The people can purchase that time. It's a bit passive income. They don't yep. have to put it. It's minimal effort for, you know, maximum return, if you like. I think people do that, but it's right. I think you definitely need some kind of coaching model. I know that I'm surrounded by quite a lot of high-profile athletes, different people, and they've all got some kind of coach, all of them. Mate, whether, whether it's even mind, mindset coaches, they've got business coaches, mentors. Yep. Even, even I've got one. So I know that the people who I look up to, and even in the networks that I'm in, I'm like, okay, if I've got questions and I've got certain things, I need people all the time who are better than me, all the time in 100%. every area. And I always like to think that. And I, always, I almost pride myself on being the least intelligent person all the time. Yep. Because if I know that, actually, there's probably nothing you can teach me now, I'm probably in the bad scenario. You know what I mean? You yep. need that. That's why for you, I really want to get you on because I see what you get up to. Obviously, we're going to get into your story, but for what you're doing now, businesses, traveling, doing this, and you're taking someone from just being a normal business, they're doing well. Yeah. But And I think I, I'm going to quote you, Ray, but I think you make, you, you, what, are you, what did you say? You said you make winners make more records or something like that. And I loved it because I was like, ah, that's the way to think. Even if you think you've already won, there's someone like Ibi who can come along and just take you to another level. And I think that's ultimately what you're doing, mate. So it's unbelievable. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But, but, but the thing is, like, when I started off, like, I get a lot of startups come to me and say to me, Ibi, I want to make my first 6K. Unfortunately, I'm past that stage a little bit. And, like, I specialize in people who are stuck at 8 and 10K. Like, that's just where I've been for a very long time. Mm. So it's, like, it's easier for me to talk to them in their language. However, if somebody comes as a very startup, they're in a 9 to 5 job, and they say, I want to open my coaching business or online business, the problem I've seen there is, is a lot of mindset issues going on. Mm -hmm. And I'm not there to be someone's therapist at that level, unless you're paying me a lot of money. This is why when someone's already making 6K, 5, 6K, they've been through a bit of fight. Mm -hmm. They've been through war, mm -hmm. right? Because it doesn't, even 5, 6K, yeah, like yeah, they've yeah. been through a little bit. So for me, it's easier to speak to them and help them just to get to 10K and 15K. So like, this is where like I, spe I, I specialize. And coming back to your original question about like, Coaching, like, it's an amazing thing if you get it right. But this is why, why it's so important to get the processes right. Um, I, and I've learned that, like, when I first started into the coaching space, like, it wasn't the first thing I'd done. I was working with all sorts of small business owners, taking on hair salon owners, restaurant owners. But then I realized that, you know what, they're not restaurant owners. I said, open up a YouTube channel, yeah. share your story. They're not doing that. They're too stubborn. Mm. So I thought, okay, I'm not dealing with restaurant owners. I'm not dealing. So it's about, I've learned as well, like over time I've niched and I thought, right, online business coaches, they're the ones because they want to grow their brand. They want to get out there. They want a premium offer. So yeah, that's where then I've, you know, gone and I feel like I'm doing well. And it's personal development as well, isn't it? 100%. I know you're big on that, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's which, key. which I, d I definitely want to get into. But you mentioned, right? You did ten years in prison. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are going to be like, "Bloody hell, this guy is helping all these people." But actually, there's a story to probably why you're doing what you're doing now. Yeah. Can we just take a back, mate? Yeah, um, sure. Obviously, you're from Manchester. Yeah. What was your bringing like? Upbringing was really good. Like, my, I was brought up in a religious household, so it's like we never really had a shortage of anything. So, like, uh, my dad was very strict. Um, so, upbringing at the time, I thought it was fine. Like, um, I, I don't think I got to do what a lot of kids do, like hang around and just chill and just a lot of social things. But for me, it was what it was. And uh, I feel like it made me the person who I am. How did you end up getting a 10-year stretch in prison? Well, um, mum and dad broke up. So when I, like I said, when I was uh, getting brought up, like with my, with my parents, like we had everything in the house, yeah? Mm. So we had no money issues. And then at I think about 13, 14, 15, around that age, uh, mum and dad broke up and uh, my dad didn't want to live in the country no more. He said, I want, I want to move to Saudi. 
Right. I don't I don't like be I don't want to be in UK for whatever reasons. He was in property, so he said, Look, I want to go there and do my developments up there. However, you guys are coming with us, with with like basically supporting him. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to do that. So at the time I said, No, I'm gonna stay with my mum in UK because my mum was ill. She mm-hmm. was going through um kid like dialysis, she had kidney problems. Right. Okay. So I said, Look, I'm gonna stay with mum. You go on your own. He didn't like that as the father figure of the house and, you know, he's an alpha male and, you know, he was a business owner and he was the one who's providing everything. So he pulled the financial plug from us. So, all right, cool. Like, if you're not going to listen to dad, then go and figure out how you're making money yourself. Go and do it yourself then. That's ruthless, that like, isn't it? Well... To your own kids. Well, yeah and no, right? So, um, So for me, like, up until 14, 15, never had no money issues, never even thought about it. For, yeah, I'm going to do business. All of a sudden, that's gone. So then what's happened is I've ended up on the streets, mm-hmm. figured my way out on the streets and started getting into, you know, crime and doing all the dumb shit. And that's what landed me in prison. You, you say just, you know, like getting into crime and the dumb shit like it's normal, right? <laughs> Bearing in mind, I understand Manchester can be a bit of a rough place, like yeah. a lot of places up and down the UK now. But you not, you're not a guy who came from the streets because you want nope. everything. Yep. So... How do you end up just getting a crime? Because you you probably been brought up in a scenario where you know better. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. But I think for me, one of the biggest things that I always learned when I was growing up was loyalty. Mm-hmm. So like, I was always loyal. I was always like loyal, right? So for me, it was first when I got onto the streets. Obviously, I'm I'm watching, for example, drug dealers get up to whatever, and then it was like, um, just started hanging around with them. Mm-hmm. And then from there, it led to started selling a little bit of weed. Mm-hmm. So started doing the like the dirty work first, right? And then because I was a loyal guy, like I think my character was just really like loyal. Like if 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 I'm hanging around with you, I got you. Like that mm-hmm. sort of personality. Mm-hmm. I just kind of like worked my way up to the main guys. Mm-hmm. And then you know, with like drug dealing comes violence. So when something was happening, something naughty was happening, I was like the first one, like. Almost not encouraging it, but like, I'm with you type thing. Mm-hmm. So I think that got me to kind of further down the path of crime. Mm-hmm. And then it was like one thing led to another. And it was like, and then it was just like anything that was happening, I was there. I think I was more like, well, I need the respect. I need to make my name and just kind of doing anything to get into it. Like, that's how it was. And yeah, and then just ended up in trouble. Do you think that was because your dad was kind of not around at that point as well? Do you think there was a bit of your way you felt like you needed to be the man? Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe, possibly. Um, didn't have any role models at the time, so it was like the role models were the people on the streets. That's all I seen, that's all I knew. So I just followed their path, yeah. Before you ended up in, in that situation, mate, did you, you know, obviously violence and stuff, did you see a lot of dodgy stuff going on on the streets as well or was it because obviously the, the world of drug dealing and all them things yeah. and, and all the things you were getting up to it's madness yeah what type of things did you see on the streets so like just just really um, on the streets what do you mean like so for instance I had a guy on recently who yeah. said it was normal for you know people around him to get murdered and stabbed and shot and all that was that normal around no, 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 no 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 not not like getting murdered and sh- shot yeah but it's like very rare, like not not at someone, like yeah, well at someone at a crowd type thing. Mm-hmm. But I've never witnessed like a murder or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Like not not to that length. And, and when you were doing them things, would you have always been a guy who'd make sure you had a knife on you and all that? Never a knife. Never like that. No, the only stupid thing a few times I'd done was firearms, and then I got caught for that. It's even that's mad though, you know. You're yeah. Like, never a knife. I had a gun, but never a knife. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So was that? And again, so would you think? Do you think people chose? like weapons over knives like guns over knives I, I think if people can afford to have a gun they'll have a gun mm-hmm. because obviously it's mo- imagine someone pulls out a gun it's like a little bit more intimidating mm-hmm. um, where the, a lot of younger kids now and I don't want to like say anything to like, like hype it up but you know the young 16 to 21 year olds like it's easier to just grab a knife right mm-hmm. so they'll just hold a knife because it's what is it 10-15 quid or 20 quid mm-hmm. Um, and in many ways, it does kind of more damage as well, right? But mm. it's just, you think of a gun or you think of a knife, sometimes you just think, you think, associate gun with like dead people, right? Or <laughs> someone's going to die, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's like, or you watch all that in movies. But um, yeah, so it's like, if, you, if like I had access to one, so 
that's what I carried a few times, yeah. Did did you keep that life away from your family life? Yeah, totally. So there was no, they had no England. That no England. You were, you were running around the streets getting up to all this and no one knew? No one knew, no. No. Obviously until... Well, it was my mum, really. She, she didn't have a clue. She used to obviously say stuff like, you know, why you come why have you come home late? Or when it's when it gets past like eleven PM, she'll ring me, Are you coming? Yeah, I'm coming home, I'm coming home, but it's like, you know, you end up coming home at like twelve one. Mm-hmm. But yeah. It's, <laughs> it's crazy because I'm sitting opposite obviously a guy who's very successful now. And yeah. it, it's again not glamorizing it because it's, no. it's, yeah, it's, it's not a yeah. good life. But I also think it's quite it's nice to think there's belief for people who are going down the wrong path that they can turn it around regardless. Do you know what I mean? Like if you're, if you're selling drugs or you're getting caught up with the wrong people, you definitely can pull that back around and be that guy who's helping people, be yeah. that guy who makes money for himself, do all that type of stuff. It's, for me, that's really important because I know... I think the youth of the day are just getting worse. I sound yeah. probably old saying that, don't I? But I do, I feel like the youth of the day, like it's scary out there, mate. People are going around with knives and everything. And I feel like for someone like you who's who's did that length of time in prison as well, to then still come out, yep. pff, it just goes to show anything is possible. If, 100%. If you put your mate. mind to it, do you know what I mean? 100%. I think, and this is why, this is what I mean. Like that's my why and that's my purpose. Mm-hmm. So when I'm showing up for coaching, like I'm really passionate like, I sometimes kick off with my mentees, like, saying, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you need to step up. Like, that's just my character. And they know I mean it from love, right? Yeah, because yeah, I want them to do well. But, like, thinking about it, like, when I was on the streets, why I was on the streets? Because I didn't know anything else, mm-hmm. right? And that was, like, a very long time ago. But now, they've got no no excuses because it's, we have social media. You can go to local networking events. Mm-hmm. You can literally go on TikTok and who you follow if you want to for example follow a motivational speaker you watch that video once it'll start popping up Mm -hmm. so these days kids have plenty more options to choose the right path Mm -hmm. it's just about people like me probably and other coaches and like just about getting the message out there be like oh he's spent 10 years in prison and now he's come out changed life like i'm no no one special I've not got a degree or anything so they can do the same I think the problem with that is though they've got a lot of options to be positive but they've also got the distractions of the negative world as well on social innit so I guess it's about choosing who you follow and trying to block out the negative shit in your life it's so hard it's so hard when did it come on top to be how did you end up in prison Um, basically um, I ended up we ended up we ended up with a problem with another party that owed money Mm -hmm. and then violence we applied violence and just got caught, just left uh, evidence and just got caught. But what was the actual scenario? Oh. Like, why did that happen? Yeah, yeah. So somebody, a drug dealer owed 50K mm-hmm. and we rang him up and said, hey, listen, you need to drop that money off. If you And it was like first, you know, oming and ahhing and, you know, back and forth. And he said, listen, but I've had enough. You're dropping it off by, I don't know, I, th- I can't remember word for word, but it was mm-hmm. like by this time. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, we're going to obviously let you know about it. And then from there, it was like, shut up the house. to Just to let them know that we were serious. Shot? Yeah, up. shut up the house. Okay. Yeah, not anybody, like, just the house, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, did you do that? Yeah. Just to give it some warning signs. Had you fired a gun before at this point? Yeah, in the park. Not at someone, just to Mental practice, life. yeah. Practice? <laughs> I know, well, because we're not, I'm not, I don't want to laugh, but like... Yeah. Even that in itself, like just that fired guns and parks to practice just sounds mind blown to me because that, I mean, I know it definitely happens over here, but yeah, yeah. It, that's not the norm. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like you're getting kids getting stabbed in that, which is just outrageous. Yeah. But then when you're saying like you would just go to the park and practice things like that. And then when you were shooting up the house, yeah. did you ha- did you not feel like you could have hurt someone? No, because it, it, the way the way we had done it was, it was like, it was to... It was on the top end of the window. Mm-hmm. Um, so if it was to go in, it would have only gone to the ceiling. Mm-hmm. It, it could was, ricochet though, couldn't it? And maybe, but I was 18 as well at the time. Maybe was I wasn't what? too smart to um, follow the, where could this go? It was just simply like, it was three in the morning. Mm-hmm. Okay, they're all going to be sleeping. Um, and if we do it at the window, it's just going to obviously come in at the top window and hit the ceiling, but it'll make a loud noise. Mm-hmm. So if anything, it was more of a shock factor, like what's happened? So they just pay the money up type yeah, of Yeah, thing. yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, like, I'm so sorry. Like, um, and remember, you have to understand these were drug dealers as well. 
Mm-hmm. So, so he's not like expecting this. Yeah, yeah. Yet. So he's not like we're dealing with like innocent like people in terms of like just normal people. We're dealing with like drug dealers, drug dealers going on. It's just a war going on. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, that was that. Um, and then from there, it was like I'll drop the money off in a week, mm-hmm. um, but I have to go to the bank and get it. But what they done was they got in touch with Scotland Yard right. police and said this is what's happened. These are the messages that have come through. These are the phone calls that we've had. And um, and then the police told them what to do, which was, no problem, communicate with them. Police told them to communicate with us. I'd be like, we'll drop it off. Give us one week because we need to go to the bank. Like 50 grand is a lot of money. We don't have it on us, blah, blah, blah. And we'll drop it off in a week. And then we arrange the location. But obviously Scotland Yard was telling them exactly what to say. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that was the trap where? Did you not f- did you not think something was a bit dodgy there though? Like saying we've got to go because which drug dealers are keeping fifty grand in the bank? Well, what they said was that like, we need money and we're gonna get it off family. We don't All have right. fifty grand, so we need to go to the bank and get you know. I can't okay. remember obviously word for word, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. but it, I remember them saying like we haven't got all this money, so I'm gonna borrow it off A, B, and C. But I need they need to go to the bank and get it, and mm-hmm. we don't have access to it, so I need one week, which was at the time seemed like fairly normal. Like okay, fair enough. Mm-hmm. I believed it. And they set the trap for, obviously, they gave a location, time, date. And I actually sent somebody else to pick the money up. Mm-hmm. I just hired, like, a crackhead. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I thought, in case they have rung the police, I don't want to get caught. <laughs> what do you mean, hired? How would you hire a crackhead? No, no. Like, it's, you have to understand, like, so I was in the drug, like, in the um, crime world, right? Yeah. So, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to know these people mm-hmm. because right, they so. do dirty jobs. Mm-hmm. Right, so it's like, um, okay, I'll pay. I'm not gonna pay someone who's higher up to say go and pick some money up. They'll be like, shut up, baby. Like, what are you talking about? So obviously, you're gonna pay someone who's l- like that sort of person and be like, listen, I, I said I'll give you five k, mm-hmm. but I want you to pick this money up. But you could get nicked. Mm-hmm. Like I did tell him that, uh, and this is what's going on. So I want you to pick up the money at the Pacific time when when I get a message that has been delivered, and then you're gonna take it to this destination. This was the plan. But remember, I didn't know the crackhead or the smackhead. I didn't really know him. Like, yeah, yeah. personally, it was just like someone from network to network. Like, all right, let's just use him. And then he picked the money up and nothing happened, right? So, but police was watching all this. Right. They, right, they had right. everything under surveillance. I was under surveillance mm-hmm. from that morning from my house. They, they were watching everything from actually from the night before. Right. Right. Um, and then with him... He picked the money up. And remember, I don't know him now. So in my head, I'm thinking, and I was in the area because I was watching in the car. Like, remember, I'm 18. Like, mm-hmm. I'm watching. Has he picked the money up? Oh, he's picked the money up. And then, but I'm thinking, wait a minute. Like, something came in my head and, th- and said, you don't know this guy. He's just picked 50K up. What if he does a runner? Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. It's a doggy doggy's world, right? It's like people don't trust no one. Mm-hmm. So I let him walk for about five, six minutes. And the original plan was, like, it was this girl's house. We said, you're going to go to that girl's house. I, I will meet you up there. And I was thinking the distance between he picks up the money and the house is 10 minutes walk. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't get nicked in 10 minutes, then maybe they didn't ring the police. Yeah. Right? Did so you this, ever have a suspicion that this might have been a setup? A little bit, but I thought that 10 minutes will kind of... The 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 picture will be clear. Like yeah, I get that. Like because that's ten minutes. What about shooting the house though? Did you not think they might be on here for that? No, I, but I, obviously, if I had got caught with this, then I knew that I was going to get caught for that. Yeah, of course. because it's linked. Yeah, yeah. But that was at the time we weren't thinking about the, the. All we knew was no one was hurt, so it was like it's gone. It's, it's gone. Yeah. But it was like we need the money now. Mm-hmm. So I let the guy walk for five minutes, and I got impatient. And I pulled up next to him at the lights before he reached the girl's house. And I said, listen, just jump in the car. He's fine. <laughs> He's fine. Like, you're not going to get nicked. Mm-hmm. So he jumped in the car, drove down three, four minutes down this way to a car park. It was a gym car park. So I went and I promised him I was going to give him five grand. So before he jumped in the car, he put the money in the boot. Mm-hmm. Um, when we pulled up at the car park, um, I got out the car to pay him his five grand because I just wanted to open bag, make sure it's the right money. And they were all bundles in five, five K bundles. Mm-hmm. So I remember like, I knew what five K looked like. So I picked up a bundle. I come to the front. I, I gave him five K. He was more f- switched on than me. He's opened the thing. He said, Ibi, this is not real money. 
So I'm yeah. like, what are you talking about? He's talking to me in passenger, I'm in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what are you talking about? It's not real money. But by the time I'm processing this, I said, wait a minute. So I've got back out the car. I've gone to check. So I've checked it. As I'm checking, police pull up. And that's where they got us like, get on the floor, get on the floor. Mm -hmm. And you know, all that. And by that time, obviously I was nicked by this point. Mm -hmm. And later on then, when obviously I got nicked at that time, got charged in the police station, I didn't get um, bail. I got remanded straight away because obviously it was a serious charge. What was the charge? It was conspiracy to blackmail with intent to use firearm. Right, okay. Yeah. So, um, and then got nicked straight away. And um, later on, I found out that they had die, police put die. First, it was fake money and they put die in there. So whoever opens the bag, their fingerprints would be on that. So it was no way I was getting out of it in terms of like I got nicked like just Bank black and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. But um, yeah, and that was that, bro. That, and, that. And how long did you get for that? So I got eight years for the first sentence. Oh, was there more sentences? Yeah, I got two sentences. I've done two back-to-back -back sentences. What was the second sentence? S -s -s similar. Really? What? So you came out of prison? Yeah. And did something like that again? Yes, we're doing similar again. Yeah. Mate, how did you not learn? <sighs> Like, I feel like when I come out the first time, like, it was six months before I came out, my mum passed away. Right. Sorry, so I feel like my mum was, my, not my mum, my, my mind wasn't in the right place. And I just feel, I feel like I was a bit lost. So I came out because I didn't know anything else as well. Like, mm -hmm. I still, my head was like, I don't know what I'm going to do next. And it was like, okay, well, this is the only thing you know. And it's like, now you've got more respect because you've been in prison. So it's like people are going to fear you more on the streets because so, you've got more respect, you've got more of a yeah. name. So I played on that and then we was like going to everybody else like when we came out because it was like a few of us and it was like, anybody owe you money? Anybody owe you money? Like we were so hungry to make money. Like we would do anything stupid yeah. because we had a name as well and people were fearing us a little bit because we came out, just done an eight stretch, just come out. So just played on that. Did the, did all years go to prison for that first event? Yeah, 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 so yeah, 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 yeah. What about the the crackhead guy? Yeah, he went to. Pr I think he. I can't remember. I think he got a suspended sentence or something. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we were, went in, um, and then the second time we done the same thing. But this time the judge threw the book at me. Yeah. So this time I got like nine and a half years. But you'd have been on license, were you? Mate, I was out for like it was less than like three months. So really? really, then this time he took it serious. Yeah, give yeah. him mad, yeah, like. Yeah, but that's when it changed me. It was yeah. in that sentence, like, because I looked at my age and I thought, wait a minute, because remember the first time I got locked up, I was 19. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I've spent all my 20s inside prison. And when I got my second sentence, I thought, I'm going to come out when I'm nearly 29. And I think it was that time after that, it just woke me up and I thought, what, what am I doing? I'm not a gangster. I'm not like someone who's like, I've not come from this place. What are you yeah. doing? So it's like, you know, more talking to myself and internal work and inter and that was that. And then that changed. Do you know, deep down, it'd be like, yeah, obviously you landed in prison and stuff, right? Yeah. And you've had to go through that. You put yourself in that position. Let's mm -hmm. not, let's not beat around the bush, but like, no. do you, you're not, cause you're not really, a, you're obviously a nice lad deep down. Yeah, yeah. You're not really that guy, are you? No. So how did you handle going to prison for that length of time? Like, what prison did you arrive in? Yeah. How were your parents? Cause obviously you're probably a bit of a mummy's boy. You chose your mom over your dad. You didn't go over there. You could have had it nice. And yeah, yeah. How, how was everyone around you? Were you like? Okay, so, so prison, let me tell you something like character shines again in prison, mm -hmm. right? So um, the first time when I went to prison, like obviously there's lads there that have been in crime all their life mm -hmm. and they're going to move different to someone like me. Mm -hmm. Okay. But like I was very, very aware of like, I had a good awareness mm -hmm. and I feel like because I went there when I was 19, the first sentence taught me all that. Mm -hmm. So like, I wasn't like a loud type of a person anyway. Mm -hmm. I was just like very observant and like, I know how to keep in my lane. I know who to hang around with. I know who not to. Like, I was qu pretty switched on. What prison did you go to? Um, Forest Bank and then Strange Ways. Right, okay. Yeah, I think the first one was Forest Bank, which is like a local uh, in Manchester. It's like a remand prison. Mm -hmm. um, Strange Ways is a bit of a naughty one, isn't it? Well, second one, I was in Strange Ways like, for three years. Right, okay. Yeah, I was there for three years in my, in, on my second one. But my, my first one, I went to Forest Bank. Um, because I, I was young as well mm -hmm. and Strange Ways was only taking people that when you was 21 
Right, okay. So, yeah, I went there. But again, first sentence was just me, like, just keeping in my lane, just playing the system, playing the game. Because in jail, you have a diff like a, a system where if you want a TV, if you want the best, like, jobs, and if you want the best, like, uh, get your cat C and cat D quickly, you need to get to something called enhance, right. which takes three months. So you have to have good behavior. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was just about making sure, like, I just want a peaceful, quiet um, life in here type thing. So that was my first sentence. But then my second sentence was, it was, um, again, because now I knew how to play the, play, play the system, it was just more of that. And you have to understand, in prison, a lot of people in prison don't des shouldn't be in prison. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of mental problems. Mm -hmm. So, like, I would say about 50% need to be in mental institutions or mental hospitals or they need some different sort of help they're on drugs and that sort of thing mm -hmm. so they're not really like gangsters yeah. or someone like you would really really fear but then the people that have committed serious crime trust me they're the people that don't cause that much violence they're the quiet ones like you know like who, uh, like who is this person like they, they just won't say anything too loud they'll stay in their lane but if you cross them in a the wrong way they'll make you know they'll like they'll let you know about it Mm -hmm. And you will know by their presence and their energy, like this is a serious cut. Mm -hmm. um, so the people that are at the top of their game, they just keep themselves to themselves anyway, mm. if that makes sense. Because that's what the second sentence, I, I totally understand. Obviously, you've went back, you've kind of, you're a bit tougher, you understand the, the system a bit more, you're probably yeah. a bit more fearless. The first sentence is what kind of... I'm interested in because for a lad again who's not really about that, you've did some stupid things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've ended up in there. It's bad. It's bad crack. But I imagine if I was younger and that was, I'd feel like my life was over. Yeah. How did you navigate that system and keep? I know you said you stayed stayed in your lane, but did you ever get challenged when you were in there? Because if you're not really like that, yeah, and someone can sense that, yeah, do you not become a victim? Well, look. Firstly, I could handle myself, mm -hmm. right? Um, and when I'm saying like I wasn't so. I've always been really, really good at um, keeping the right, the right, the wrong energy away. Mm -hmm. So if somebody came to me and said to me, like, like I had a lot of times where people could say, oh, "Do you have a smoke?" or "Can I come in this?" or "Just come in your pad and stuff like that." You just say, "Get, get the fuck out," mm -hmm. or just you don't speak to them. You know, you do, you just don't entertain the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and the more you do that with people, the more no one's gonna keep coming back to you because they see your. He just doesn't want to speak to me. So um, I wasn't even hanging around with them sort of people. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, it was about just figuring out. I, I built like I built friendship with two, three people who were kind of um, like they had it OK on the wing. Mm -hmm. And it was just like hanging around with them. And they were just like normal people. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like you attract your character in it. So who yeah. you are. So like if I'm a naughty kid, I'm going to attract a naughty per like. Let's, let's get up to no good. But if I'm not really that person, then in, in prison, there is many different types of people. They're not, it's not just like one type of a person. There's naughty kids, there's good kids, there's kids who just stay quiet, there's kids who just mind their own business. So I just attracted who I was like and just started hanging around with them. So, I, I, I mean, I've had guys who've did 30 years, 25, all, all these different types of yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on the on the show, mate. But the reason why I'm interested in your story, mate, yeah. is because... Obviously, I've not done the madness you have. Yeah. But I think there's some similarities as in, I can tell deep down you're probably an R8 lad. You want to do well. You're business-minded, very entrepreneurial, bit of a hustler. Yeah. Want to help other people. You want to build your personal brand. You're into self-development. You train at five o'clock in the morning. You read your books. You're journaling. You're doing all these things. Like, a lot of these things are traits that I have, and that's the type of stuff that I practice. Yeah. So for me, with a prison thing, like, did you... Like, all these different types of people I've had on, they'll say prison was hard. Some people, nah, man, it's, it's a piece of piss. Like, do it on my head. How did, do you think it's hard? And is, and is it as bad in prison as what people think, like, the violence? Okay, so, like, now where I am today, like, if I went into prison right now, it would be really hard. Mm -hmm. Because, like, my, mentally I'm in a different place. I've got a lot of luxuries. And, like... I've got a lot of freedom and that's going to get taken away. Mm -hmm. But when I went, when I was 19, I had nothing else going on outside, right? Yeah. So course. almost it was like a comfort thing. It was like, okay, I've got time to myself. Like, like I can, I'm, I'm a bit lost anyway. So this is what's happening. So I feel like it all depends where you are in life. The mm -hmm. other thing is, was I had no kids. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I had no good. I had no like misses. Mm-hmm. Like now, if you add that to someone's problems, you've got misses, you've got kids, you've got businesses out there. Well, then prison's gonna be really tough for you. Yeah. Right. Because you're gonna you're dealing with all these problems. Oh, I've just rang my bird up. She's not answering the phone. What the fuck is she doing? Is Friday night, Saturday night? Is she out with someone else? Mm-hmm. Like these, I I seen these problems regular. Mm-hmm. Like you got like men, like big like lads who are like classed as boys, like and be like like just stressing over their birds. Mm-hmm. Now for someone like them, prison is gonna be really tough because he's gone into that cell on Friday night, eight p.m. and the uh, screws and I've locked him up the officers have locked him up and he's stressed because his bird's not answered the phone at 6pm where for someone like me I was single um, you know I had my faith as well mm-hmm. that kept me going like I was a bit more free spirit type thing so all I was doing is reading books doing my burpees mm-hmm. going to the gym uh, for me it was more like I found my way and I don't think it was too hard the only thing I found hard was the freedom part right okay like and having, not having the luxury, not having like not having to do what I want to do. Yeah, having to obey orders from like officers and screws and stuff like that. But yeah, so it wasn't hard in that way because it's a different life, and they have all the things that you need up there. Mm-hmm. But like, it depends who you are as a person. Like, if I went in now, bro, it would be really tough. Because I've a lot, I've got businesses, I've got responsibilities, like I've got my, do you know what I mean? But the mental side of it, because you'd know what you'd be if if you did something now, you know what you're going into. You you're probably gonna know people in there. Yeah, that's another thing. So you, so in a way, it would be easier now. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's two ways to look at it, right? So if I want my jail to be easy, yeah, it will be as easier. But like life will then life problems will give me stress where mm. I didn't have that initially. Mm-hmm. on the first two sentences because I had no business really out here. Mm-hmm. Um, I had no kids, had no girlfriends. So it's like, like, yeah, it depends like what responsibilities you have. Then depending on that, you will find jail easy or hard. Um, so yeah, like it, it all depends. On, it's context, isn't it? Yeah. Did you, did you see much violence? Um, a few times. Did you? A few times. Mm-hmm. People like, um, yeah, like, one, two times gangs kicked off, mm-hmm. throwing pool balls at each other. Mm-hmm. I seen, but I didn't see, I seen someone at like, it was one evening and then the next night he killed himself in the cell. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really see it, but heard yeah, so yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff like that going on. Mm-hmm. I seen um, people throwing hot water at someone mm-hmm. with sugar and stuff like that. Yeah. So that sort of violence, um, but it wasn't like, can you sleep stabbed. easy though? Huh? Can you can you sleep easy, or you're always looking over your shoulder? No, you're, you're paranoid, bro. Oh yeah. Yeah, you, you are super paranoid. Were I you feel padded like, up with people as well? Um, yeah, I, I was also I was padded up, but also had a single cell at different stages of my uh, prison journey. Right. Okay. I'm yeah, yeah. Uh, but sometimes if you got Padme and you connect with him, like it makes the jail, jail a little bit easier because you can speak to them about things. Mm-hmm. But when you're on your own, then you just have to find your own routine. So it just depends who you are as a person, right? Do you know what? You know, I know this sounds mad, mate, right? Yeah. But you know what would? I think the. I don't think I'd have the confidence to go to the toilet in front of someone. No, but in the, the cell. Yeah, you well, know, I know I that sounds mad. No, like I would be that. Like the violence, I get it. But you've kind of you just gonna have to toughen up and deal with yeah, it. Yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. Get yeah. a crack, you're gonna have to get into <laughs> someone. But it's it's that stuff where I'm like, ah, do I? You know what I mean? Okay, so um, strange ways like dirty prison, right? So the toilets are in the cell, but there's a curtain around it. Mm-hmm. So you get you get really used to it, you know. Like, yeah. you, you both, like, if you're padded up with someone, you find your time. Like, for me, like, I knew in the morning, like, he gets up at 7. <laughs> so I figured that out. Well, I'm, I'm getting up at 6 because I like my own space in the morning. So, well, you know what, fuck it. I'll get up at 6 in the morning. I'll wash myself. I'll, I'll get ready. I'll get changed. So by the time he wakes up, he can get his hour. Mm-hmm. The worst time is, like, when you... This, but this all comes down to self-awareness. Yeah, Like, course. I clocked that. I thought, right, okay, like, I'm going to get up at 6. I don't want to get up like after seven and I'm rushing and it's people walking in and out and I just don't want that. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's about making them sacrifice and figuring out, okay, what do you need to do to make your comfort, like make it as comfortable as possible for you. So in your mind, you're not stressed. Mm-hmm. So it's about noticing these things and then figuring things out and then just like sticking with it. Because you've kind of transferred that, what you've learned in there. Skills, yeah. To, to your life now, haven't you? hundred percent. Like one thing, like it's self-awareness I learned in there. Mm-hmm. I also learned like it's something I call others awareness. Right, yeah. so it's about being aware of what how others um, perceive awareness. Let's say someone's from China, mm-hmm. their awareness is going to be different to my awareness. Mm-hmm. So born in like up here, and then it's like situational awareness. 
like to like situations you got to be like good at picking up patterns mm -hmm. like like i could see like when someone was about to kick off i could see like three steps before that like okay something's about to go off mm -hmm. or that he's just said that to him like he's about to do something do you think that's do you think you're born with that or do you think yeah you adapt to learn that <sighs> i think i i think i learned that in prison yeah 100% because like i see a lot of kids out here like like just doing their life normal and they haven't got awareness so i feel like when i was in prison because it was something going on every five minutes like okay what's happened now oh what's happened now like imagine being in a war zone like mm -hmm. you speak to, I, i've spoken to, like I, I know someone who who was in the army right mm -hmm. and they're the same because yeah. there's always something happening so they're you're on alert, alert. Yeah, you're yeah. always on alert so but i guess that that that's that serves you in business as well what were your parents like when you went through that journey in life well, uh, my my dad was really upset, but he didn't. He, he's, he's a man of very few words, mm -hmm. so he's sil He was just silent, and like, um, I guess that spoke volumes. He didn't really say anything to me, and just mum was just mum. Like she was mm -hmm. just upset. Like yeah. she was probably thinking like like, well, how's this happened? When you got out the second time, did yeah. you know that was it? No more. Um, the second time I knew about, yeah, no yeah. no second time I knew because it was in prison at the second time when I started reading my books uh, I started focusing on inner work personal development I started like changing my physique like gym was all I was doing and I knew I think a year before I was coming out like I knew like I was moving out of my area straight away like I already knew that mm -hmm. uh, because I knew that's where the problem was I didn't want to see any of them all friends but they're not friends but mm -hmm. who i thought was friends um i was really 100 percent on that and it was like okay i need to do something in terms of business but i didn't know what yeah of course. but i was i was super focused the second time do you like now when you're on the outside do you ever look back at them days and miss them i know that sounds mad right but and obviously a lot of people get you know the what is it? What's it called again? It's like a uh, fear of the gate or something like yeah, that. Yeah, fear yeah. Fear and all that type of stuff. Obviously, when you've got out and sort of got into life and started building business and all that type of stuff, did you ever think, actually, do you know what? I could easily go make a quick few quid here or do this or was no, it never tempting? No, not when once I understood that um, you can make more money doing this, what I'm doing, coaching. I How did you know? How did you know you could? Um, I, I've done a lot of uh, mentors and coaches. I was, I was in a room once mm -hmm. and... Um, it was Jay Abraham's mastermind, mm -hmm. okay? And everybody in that room was making a million quid a month. Okay, I paid um, just short of 30 grand to be in that room. And I wanted to learn how to make a million quid a year, okay? And everybody in that room when I got to that room was talking about, yeah, a million quid a month, a million quid a week. Like th The language was different, mm -hmm. completely different. And I was like, what the fuck's happening here, right? I'm, I'm in a different world. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's when I started studying um, what the coach was talking about. I started making connections with people that was making a million quid a month. And I was like, what's going on here? Like, like these guys have got no degrees. Like if he can do it, I can do it. Like, I don't understand what the difference here is. And then once I started, st I started studying, I started researching money. I started understanding how money works. Mm -hmm. And I started getting um, educated on financial literacy. And that's when I understood that, ah, okay, this is how you make money. Like, you need more skills. You need to level up your mindset in terms of, like, you're always going to fall to the strength of your systems. Mm -hmm. Like, this is where um, I learned, like, for example, if you look at, like, lottery winners and stuff like that, when they get that million or two million, ten million quid, because they're not ready for it, they lose it. Yeah. So, and, and I started learning that, and then I started learning, okay, what is high-ticket coaching? What is that? And I think for, for me, once I learned that, and then I also understood that what era we're living in, yeah, that helps hugely, right? Mm -hmm. So we're living in 2024, it's the digital era, and the wealth always shifts with the era that you are living in. So for example, AI is huge now. Yeah. So if we sleep on AI, like... You're going to miss out. We're going to miss out. Mm -hmm. But it's not to say that you can't make money growing up, uh, buying a farm and growing chicken, like whatever, in a, on a farm. But, <laughs> but, but, you know, you know what I mean? Like Who's the agriculture that? age, uh, right? Yeah, 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 but yeah. some people are trying to make money living in the past. Uh, yeah, you've got to get with the times. You've got to get with the times. The thing is, though, Ibi, you, you're, you're a forward thinker. Yeah. And you've, you've definitely got a growth mindset. You can, you can just sense that anyhow. But okay. But with you... 
and my argument for the people listening and watching would be, okay, right, I want to do that thing what Ibby's doing. Yeah. I haven't got the 30 grand to get in that room. Yeah. How did you afford that? So, so when I first come out of prison, my first business was a restaurant business. Okay. Uh, my first business was a restaurant, and I like a 150 seat restaurant. It cost close to half a million to set it up. And remember, this so because I come from a good family, mm-hmm. my dad, like he was a multimillionaire before he moved to Saudi, right? He was in the property game. I took advantage of his network mm-hmm. and I went to his friends and said, Borrow me some money. This is what I want to do. This is my business plan. This is the restaurant I'm opening um, and I want to make money here. Once they seen the business plan and they knew I was committed, they borrowed me the money. So right. again, I had little advantages like that where because I was grew up, I grew up in like in a rich household, I, I knew all these rich, my dad's friends. And that's where I went and took advantage of that. Mm-hmm. And they also knew I was a good kid. They also knew I wasn't going anywhere. They also knew that I was going to open up a business. So for me, when I showed them... Do you not them, think they still had the thought you might do something daft with it though because you had a history of going to prison? No, because I, t- I bought them on board to like, like see what I was doing. Literally meet okay. the landlord. Here's the franchise owners. This is what I'm doing. Like, yeah. let's, I showed them everything, right? Mm-hmm. And I was really transparent. I said, look, this is what I want to do, right? And I showed them the numbers. And once they seen everything, they was like, cool, I got you. Um, and remember, these guys were already like in their 50s and 60s. These guys are worth already 10 million, 20 million. Yeah. So for them, like this is really small change, mm-hmm. right? But for me, it was huge at the time. Mm-hmm. So I opened my first restaurant business. I didn't know what I was doing really. I got support from the franchise uh, owners. Mm-hmm. And from there, I hired mentors and coaches and started learning the game. Okay. Right. So I started hiring staff, managers, chefs, dealing with HR, dealing with finance, dealing with operations, understanding how business really works, right? dealing with like staff. Like it's all headache. Delivery drivers, all that. Delivery <laughs> drivers. Like my payroll was like, um, like you're talking 35 grand a month. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so like our turnover in that business was like we're dealing with like a couple of hundred grand a month. Mm-hmm. Just turnover, not profit. Mm-hmm. So we were dealing with a lot of money and I started dealing with all that and facing all problems head on, made so many mistakes and hired coaches and I learned the hard way. Yeah. So then I opened up another restaurant straight after that. I got big for my boots and it completely fucked up. Did it? Completely failed. I spent like a quarter of a million, failed hugely, didn't make no money. I thought, what the fuck am I doing? Were you going to start a chain? That type I, of thing? I thought, brilliant. I'm making this much money here. If I open up another one, it's going to do the same. It doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. So... Fucked up on that business, lost like quarter of a million, 300 grand, came back to this business. And then um, when I was making money, I was investing into property. Mm -hmm. Learned that from my dad Mm -hmm. because he was in property since I was young. Started making money up there. Started going on educational courses. Mm -hmm. Like that's where I started paying people because I had the cash flow money coming in. I thought, okay, I need to go to the best coaches. Mm -hmm. And I feel like because I was bought up in a rich household, I've, all, I've always liked the VIP stuff. I've always liked the good stuff. So you've had high standards. So I, high standards since I was growing up. So for me, like, I've not been hesitant when someone says spend 10 grand. I see the value. I see it quite differently. Because yeah. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to save time. I'm in with the best. Like, I'm going to learn here. Mm-hmm. So I see it really differently. So for somebody listening or watching, Abby, who's yeah. wanting to get into whatever it may be. They yeah. want to be mentored. They want to just level up. They want to start a business. Yeah. I understand that that's not your ideal clientele. But at the same time, if someone's strapped for cash, you know, it's it, it would be wrong to say that they don't have a chance in business. Yeah. What can they be doing to you know, start? You know what, bro? You know what I'm doing? Like, I'll tell you something now. So I've got, I'm launching something in like next two. When does this podcast come out? Uh, what's your... A few weeks. Like f- four weeks, yeah, five weeks? Now. Yeah, yeah. So I've got like... Um, so, so because I get a lot of requests like that, mm-hmm. what I've done now is like, because I don't work with startups, I'm creating a community coaching community where I put all the info on how to get to your first five, six K for free. Mm-hmm. People are, I know people are charging two grand, three grand for all that. Mm-hmm. I'm giving it away for free mm-hmm. for two reasons. One, so they can genuinely go and learn how to make five and six K. Mm-hmm. And the second reason is when they get to five, six K, they'd be like, Ibi, can you help us now? come into my paid stuff and be like, can you help us get to more? Yeah. So I'm doing that right now. I've been recording for the last six months where I'm giving all that away for free. Yeah. So, but for someone who's starting off, if they really want to um, um, make, the, make money, firstly, they need to decide on what they want to sell, mm-hmm. what, the, what their niche is. That's the number one. 
then go and do some market research. Make sure that what you're offering is in high demand. So let us just be clear. Okay. Are you helping people? Is it almost on like, like online education? So you're helping people sell an offer. What, right now, you no, mean? No, I mean for that, you know, that community you're building. Yeah, so I, I will give them all the info they need to get to five, six K a month. J just doing whatever they want to do, like whatever y niche. Y y that, they will decide that, but yeah. I'm giving them the steps of what they need to do to decide that. Right, okay, I'm like, with you. Like, for example, step one is like decide on what you want to pick. What's your skill? What's your experience? Mm -hmm. That's number one, for example. So if someone's an online personal trainer, okay, well, let's, you're in the health area, yeah. right? So what part of the health area are you? They have to figure that out. Mm -hmm. They have to do the market research and figure that, okay, this is what I want. I want to help mums over the age of 40s lose 10 kg after they've like delivered a baby. Yeah. So people need to figure out what their niche is. Mm -hmm. Like I can't do that for do you them. Think, do you think it's got to be a, a, like a niche like that? Similar, cl well, close, closer. Yeah, yeah. Like they don't have to be 100% there, but as long as it can be 70%, yeah. 60%. Like look at me, when I first started off, I said, I'm, I'm working with small business owners. That's a bit vague. Yeah. Because course. you got like restaurant owners, you got also online coaches. They all fall in that category. So when you're starting off, you are going to be a little bit all over the place. Mm -hmm. But the point is get started. Yeah, I right? agree. And then after a year or two, after a year, you will start figuring out what you really like and then you can more stick with that niche mm -hmm. but initially i'm talking about for startups they need to figure out what they, they need to pick something yeah i agree mate it's, it's funny you say that and i think it's really valuable that because for instance when i started the content pt right so i was filming rappers singers yeah. years ago yeah and when i started this business i was like actually i can film online coaches pts gym owners brands yeah and i did like hotels and just random shit that yeah. i wasn't bothered about but it was yeah. cash flow so i was like oh, i'm building the business yep yeah. And the next thing you know, start working with athletes and in boxers, and and it's like actually, I found what I want to do. Yep. I want to have online coaches, athletes. That's what I want to do. Yeah. But until you, you're right. You've just got to start you because you start. don't know where you're going to be, do you? You don't know. That's the thing, isn't it? And I think it's really interesting you say that because ultimately, we, I know, we need in the world more people like yourself offering services to people who need the help. We yep. need. That's what we need. Hundred yep. percent. Because when I was younger. I would have got my student loan just to pay someone to, to teach us. Yeah. That wasn't an option. The option was nine grand a year to go to uni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the option. Yeah. So now it's, it became more re re readily available for people to actually access people like yourself. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Is there a certain demogra demographic of people who you don't work with? Um, at the moment, just startups. Mm -hmm. Literally someone who's in a nine to five job mm -hmm. and they want to get into business. Like, for them it's all because it's all mindset work mm -hmm. they think it's strategy it's not strategy like they need to get into a different mindset so what are the things you've noticed for the clients you, that you work with what are, what are common traits what things do you find that people get wrong when they're trying to scale their business well firstly they get caught up in shiny object syndrome mm -hmm. so for example if one thing's working they will think, okay, well, this is working. I'm going to go and do something else. Like my first restaurant was working. I went and opened up another one like a dickhead, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> but, but, but this is what people do. They get carried away. They get carried away with new opportunities. Yeah. Because then, the thing is, when, you're make, when, you're start, when you start making your 10 grand a month, mm -hmm. bro, that's a really good place to be. Mm -hmm. And comfort kicks in. Mm -hmm. And being serious, like it's a dangerous, comfortable place mm -hmm. where now you've lost your drive. You've lost motivation. Then you need to reconnect with why you started in the first place. Yeah. Right. So a lot of business owners get there and they get caught up in new opportunities and then they get carried away with that. They, ne they neglect their original business and that starts going downhill. And most likely the second thing they started because they're focusing on that. Now that doesn't work. And then when they come back to this, now they've lost so many customers, which they have to start rebuilding again, or they, they, they're just about doing okay and they've lost interest just lost don't know what to do and they're just stressed out burnt out exhausted and then life kicks in if they've got kids and families so like it's so many problems in business everyone has different problems depending yeah. where they are the biggest ones i've seen is they get focused on something else and number two is like they don't understand high ticket coaching what it is they don't understand how you can charge someone 10 grand 20 grand they don't understand the psychology behind that yeah, of course. Um, and once I break it down to them and I make them understand, then they get it. The other problem I see with people is like they have lead gen issues. Mm -hmm. A lot of lead gen, they, they don't know how to attract the leads like coming in like on autopilot. 
huge problem I see in especially online businesses I've seen. Like a restaurant business, no problem because people are coming in. Yeah, of course. Like, Anywhere. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So that's a really good business in terms of leads. Mm -hmm. You just have to be smart enough to capture their details so you can resend them offers and, uh, and keep them nurtured. If you don't know by now, I run a business called The Content PT. I create content for influencers, PTs, online coaches, and fitness brands all around the world. So if you are someone who's in need for sexy content for your social media, or you really want to maintain a competitive edge in your industry, drop me a DM on Instagram. So are you, are you big into like creating email lists and all that type of stuff as well? Well, you have to these days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, you, if you haven't got an email list, like that's just, if in a biz, as a business owner, you, you do, what are you doing? So the question I've got to you, Ibi, and it's a curiosity of my own, right? Yeah, yeah. So how important is personal brand and following? Because you've got about 22, 23,000 followers. Yep. Doing very well in business. I've got friends who've got millions of followers. Yep. In the struggle in business. What do you think is more important? Do you think it's important to have that following? Or do you no. think it's... No. no, 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 no. Like, following doesn't matter. Views doesn't matter. It's what converts that matters. Mm -hmm. Okay. You could have, like, 10 people watching you, and they could be the right 10 people. They will buy. Like, yeah, that's more valuable than having someone, like, like I think, 50,000 followers and, like, whatever it is, right? Uh, but also, like you will understand this, like social media has changed a lot. Yeah, of course. Now it's very, like someone could start a Instagram today and post a really good content and that could get a lot of views than someone who's got 25,000 followers and they're, they've been putting content. So it's all about what your content is now. Do you know what, mate? I, I know a lad who did a YouTube video. Yeah. He got about 800 views and he got 30 high ticket sales. Right. And that's it. How yeah. mad is that though? Like That's crazy. So low views. Yeah. I mean, and when I say high ticket, these are like five to six K a month yep. clients yep. per month. Yep. Yep. So if one YouTube video, this guy's on his way to financial freedom. There you is, go. Which is frightening. Yep. The power of that. Do you have a lot of knowledge on the I know you've got YeTube channel. Yeah. I've I've seen your videos. How is the what is the best approach for someone to upload on YouTube in terms of how to get warm leads? Okay, so um it depends on your strategy, right? So my strategy with, with YouTube is just pump out really good content, hoping that it attracts the right person and have a link underneath, whether it's to book a call or whatever it may be to come into your funnel, mm -hmm. right? So uh, as long as I can provide really good content for the right person, it will attract the right person because I know when I watch a really good YouTube video and I'll be like, who is this person? Mm -hmm. Like, I want to work with this person. So that's number one. Like, have like a little CTA, whatever it may be for you. And if you're starting off, then the best thing to really do is like book a one-to-one -one call and take on one-to-one -one clients yeah. just so you can generate some good money because you can charge a lot for that, Yeah, of course. right? There's no point doing a low ticket because what are you going to charge someone £100 a month? Like, it's just, you're not making any money right now. Mm -hmm. So as long as you have a strategy for that. And like, I always say like, this is why, this is why it's so important to get clear on who your niche is. Yeah. Because if you have, if you know who you're doing content for, mm -hmm. that content is going to be clear, crystal clear, and it's going to attract the right person. But if you don't know who you're doing content for, and you're just thinking, yeah, well, it's all these people here. Well, then it's going to, that's how it's going to come across. The reason I ask is because I've got something coming out very soon. Yeah. I'm very excited about it. Um, I want to ask you actually about it after, but because I don't want to talk about it just yet until it's finished. But for me, when someone's finding that niche, so for argument's sake, let's say you've got a lady who wants to sell a service for, I'm just making this up. Yeah, yeah, winging, yeah, yeah. Winging this, mate. But she wants to sell a service on how to start knitting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she wants to be high ticket. She wants to do one-to-one -one coaching with them, whatever it may be, mentorship, taking them through it and how to, or whatever. Yeah. Now, if the demographic of, of the average person who wants to get into knitting doesn't have a lot of money, yeah. can she still use that as an avenue? Well, this is where it comes down to understanding what the, what you're offering, like how valuable is it in the marketplace? Be, well, the reason I ask that is because I found that in the past, right? So in my current business, right? Yeah. I sell content. That's only what I do. I film yeah. all your content for you so you don't have to post. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Now, what you find is you find a lot of people who want that yeah. but can't afford that. Okay. But at the same time, I know by investing in content, they can focus on making more money on the business instead yeah. of dicking around trying to make CapCut, TikTok, all that stuff. Yeah. But 
it's very hard for them to say the value until they've did it. So how do you get someone to actually make that initial purchase? Do you know what I mean? To part with that, to believe in you. Yeah. Okay. So this is because you have to, okay. So I've been having this conversation recently in the last two weeks with people, right? And they've been telling me that they're struggling to sell high ticket mm -hmm. or, you know, like this, they're, they're struggling to get people to see the value of their product. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, when you're selling high ticket, like imagine you're about to spend 10K with someone or 5K. Yeah. Firstly, you want to understand what that person values, right? Because the root word to valuable is values, meaning like what you value is going to be different to what another business owner values. So for me, it's really important to get on a call with you and ask you really important questions and find out what you value, what you desire, yeah. okay? Once I understand that, this is where you have to have high level, like you have to really have empathy, and listen to people. Like a lot of people have this problem. I know a lot of people, they don't listen. They won't even let you finish a sentence. And they, so you have to have high level of empathy and you have to listen to the person. And you have to ask the right questions because you know your business better than anyone to find out what they value. And once you can extract that and package you up in a way where they would then appreciate it and be like, ah, okay, I value that as well. And it could be something like you like chickens and I like chickens. Mm -hmm. And maybe you value that and maybe that could be a connecting point. That could be something. And people buy for weird reasons. Yeah, of course. So as long as you can firstly figure out what they value and then present that in the offer to them, bro, they're buying all day long. So is the ultimate goal when you're trying to sell a high ticket service, I guess, then to get them on a call? I would say so. Like, especially if you're... Not just have something online where they can click and buy. No one's going to do that. Mm -hmm. Unless they've purchased your book, you have a Gary V level brand. Mm -hmm. um, even Gary, Gary V level, like, I'm not going and spending 15K if I don't know what I'm getting. Like, you've purchased someone's book first. Mm -hmm. Let's say, like, you've got a book, I purchased your book. Then I purchased, like, a $100 program you had. Mm -hmm. Then it maybe came to your net networking event. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a warm lead. I know you. You probably don't know I know you, but I know you. Now, let's say you launch something for 5K, 10K. Mm -hmm. Now that trust and connection is built, especially if I got value from your low stuff. I'm buying your high ticket. Why am so, I not? Well, that, so it's the funnel, isn't it? Yep. So it's almost like email list. I've seen them on YouTube. Or maybe it's a podcast yep. and it's the ebook or whatever, whatever it is. It all may these be. little bits of value. So you, do you think that's, that's paramount? Do you think you must have that? almost community or low ticket offer where people can kind of get a feel for you to understand you? You're supposed to have a lead magnet. So it's yeah. called a lead magnet. So you need to have a YouTube. I feel like you need to, someone has to have a YouTube channel, especially if you want to be big in the online space, mm -hmm. just so they can connect with you more. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to have short form content for Instagram and TikTok. That's for attention. Mm -hmm. That's not for CTA. Just do that for catching someone as, someone's attention. Mm -hmm. However, you want to do it because no one's going to buy a high ticket by watching a 30 second clip. Yeah. That's going to take them to maybe a YouTube channel or a free lead magnet you have. What's a lead magnet just for the people that don't know. So let's just say if I'm um, selling content, how to set up a podcast, I will give you like the 10 top tips of everything you need to know to set that up. I will give that for free mm -hmm. in exchange for your email and phone number. Mm -hmm. Why do I need the email and phone number? Because now I can send you marketing about the other things I have. I can yeah. start nurturing you. So it's really important that you give that away for free. So when you give that away for free, someone will go from cold to warm. Mm -hmm. And then when you start nurturing them and start like, hey, listen, I'm going to do something in six months. I'm going to launch something. I would love to like share my journey with you mm -hmm. and just stick with me. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Just be transparent if you don't know. Be like, I'm going to launch something for you guys, mm -hmm. but just stick with me and just keep nurturing them. Every week, send them one email. Do you do that? 100%. Yeah. 100%. Keep them nurtured. Keep them up to date with what I'm up to. Uh, whether that email looks right or wrong, just be you. Because I think, that, I mean, it's something to point out for people who are listening. Yeah. If you're watching, you can't see anyway, but obviously, Ibi, you've got an assistant here. You're filming everything that we're doing right now. <laughs> and I think it's, you're the first guy who's okay. done that. Okay. Do you know that? Oh, really? I think, I think you're the first person. I'm pretty sure. People have took clips and stuff. But yeah, you're the first guy. Yeah. And I think it's important that because, I mean, we're going to put clips out anyway, which yeah, you'll yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's so important that this is the life we live, like to document things because you never know. Like, I, I know a little bit more about marketing than what I'm letting on. But, yeah. but, but 
I know that obviously I'm trying to help people who haven't got a clue. So I understand how to try and build a squeeze page and try and get them in. But even bits of, if you just film your normal day, you can actually implement that as part of your sales funnel. 100%. And this is what I'm saying. So people don't, a lot of people don't see that. They'd probably just think, you know, why is he be getting filmed? Does he just want to be big on YouTube? But no, there's far more layers 100%. to this game. And I feel like any business owner, even if you are a restaurant, yes, you might have footfall. Yes, you might have these things. But ultimately, you can always do with more. Yep, yep, yep. It's personal branding, isn't it? Like, I, I want people to, I, I want her to capture me when I'm in my angry phase or in my, like, in my own phase or, like, and having a camera person around you, just you're going to get better at communication. You're going to get better at a lot of things that when you show up to do that video for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, you're going to come across like a professional. So all this is preparation, what people don't see. Mm -hmm. And people, like, I know people might think, like, oh, he's got a videographer. But I didn't have a videographer first. Mm -hmm. It's been, it's not been an overnight success type thing. Mm -hmm. Bro, it's been like, like a 15-year night. Yeah, <laughs> 10 years in prison, so, years yeah. before that, seven years since I've been out. Like, this is only in the last two years I've had like full time videographers on, on, on my team. So it's like it's been a very long night. Mate, do you know, have you heard the, there's a quote, isn't there, about, I don't know what the quote actually is, I'm paraphrasing it, but I saw something the other day and it was about Usain Bolt. And yeah. They were like, he's trained all his life to run nine seconds. There you and go. And I was like, boom, that's the one in it. Like, that's, that's, that's exactly how it's got to be. You. You know, it might just be that small thing that'll take you to that next level, but it's all that preparation that you've did. Like if I if I didn't film content up and down London on the streets, yeah. you know, on mega buses sleeping in the train stations, doing all that type of stuff, I had yeah. no money. For ten years, I maybe you've not got the client that I've got now. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And you and people don't see they just see that end thing. So it's the same as when you start YouTube channels, what type of advice could you give to someone who has never did a YouTube video before yeah they really want to start they're looking at all these people that maybe he's got some kind of thing they want to sell yeah how do they get good on youtube yeah well again like i'll, t I'll tell you something someone asked me um a question on my story yesterday and they asked me like i'm mentally struggling to do content right and i said to them i said look amateurs they spend more time performing and less time preparing where a professional will spend more time preparing like Usain Bolt's example, yeah. and less time performing. So what you have to do is just show up on YouTube and just be you. Mm -hmm. Even if you're, f do some research. Listen, we've got chat GPT, like chat yeah, GPTs yeah. these days. Like if you put on there, literally like how do I, what, how do I show up for my first YouTube video? I guarantee you chat GPT will tell you, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe the first video you should do an introduction to who you are, mm -hmm. where you are in your life, and what you want to achieve from this. Why but should anybody care though? Well, they they should care only if they want to build a personal brand, right, and they yeah. understand that what what we're living in, and if this this is something they want to pursue. If someone's a a judge, and they're never gonna be like on YouTube or on, maybe you shouldn't care. But if you really want to make impact, really want to help people, then you're gonna have to show up and be you and share your message out there to the world, right? And the only way you're gonna do it is on the biggest platforms, which is YouTube and is Instagram and make the most out of social media. So, um, like, they don't have to do it, but it's like if they want to build their personal brand, what else are you going to do? Yeah, I love that. Like, that's fair enough. Can I really do you know what I mean? Any better myself, like, yeah. Like, I look, I look back at my first videos and it's like, 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 like and, and I look at them now, it's like they're very different because mm. I put a lot of reps in. Yeah, that, that, that's the key, the reps. Do you that's know? The key. And I've almost like, it's fun then. Do you know what, mate? I remember when it's I fun. I started this YouTube channel a year ago. Yeah. And I remember like the first few videos and thinking, oh, what am I doing? Put myself on YouTube and stuff. And then the next thing you know, you realize the network's building and you get to meet this guy, then you fly to this place or you do this and you then you start because indirectly it helps me build the business as well 100%. and the brand. So it's like, but that wasn't the reason I did it. I just wanted to have this conversation. I want to have the like in what capacity am I ever gonna meet you? Yeah. Without a you it's without, social media, that's it, how we're here. It is, isn't it? So it's like I think it's important for people just to, from even from not from a views point of view or any of that shit. Like if you don't fo just focus on this, can actually build you as a person. Yeah. People skills. Yeah. It's it, just the simple things. How to you know? It, it's not easy to put a camera up and just talk. You feel a bit awkward. It feels a bit dodgy. But then once you do it, you start realizing actually it's just a camera. Hundred percent. No one's actually there in nope. that room. It's still just you. That's it. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's it's unbelievable where you're at in your journey now, Ivy. Do you have an exit strategy? Do you, do you know where you want to go, where you Bro, want to take it? I, I've, not, I've not got... Uh, you, you, the way you asked me that question is like I've got like 50 million or something. Nah, but the, um, 
I'm still growing. I'm still scaling. Um, for me, I'm for the next thing for me is launching that community and coaching for the startups just to help them get to level one, level two, and just continue doing what I'm doing. I think for me, the next goal is just to get out of UK. I think the reason I said about the, the exit strategy is because someone who's as forward thinking as you, you've got to be making good money now. Okay. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? Well, look, um, my, ex- my monthly expenses are no more than five, six K. And obviously I'm making more than that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so what I'm saying is, but even if you're... I'm just going to put this out there. Yeah. Let's just say for Daphnis. Let's say you're doing 20 grand a month. Yeah. All right. Okay. If we use that as a, as a, as a, as a figure, right? Now, th- that figure there, I guarantee it, up and down the country, that would be someone's dream. Yeah. So if you use that as an, as an example, as a starting point, you will know in your head, if I do this for X amount of time, yeah. I can get to this figure. Yeah. And then that's where I'll be like, actually, I maybe get someone else in. Maybe I take a step back or open up other. Do you, it doesn't have to be an extra strategy as in sell the business, but do you have a position where you think, actually, there's other things I want to pursue, but yeah. I've got to build this up to get there? Do you have that goal? Do you have this other vision? Um, I'll tell you what. So for me, remember I was brought up in money as well, right? Mm-hmm. I actually don't like money that much now mm-hmm. because I think I'm only saying that because maybe... I've made a little bit. I can see you looking at you thinking you love money. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, honestly, because like, you know, which song is that more money, more problems? Mm, biggie. Sometimes people don't know that till actually like it happens, mm-hmm. right? So sometimes like, I promise you like, like the only thing that I find really challenging is like, I need to con- continually level up. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like what I know is good enough, but like, I'm I'm always in certain rooms and I see people and I feel like I need to learn that now. I need to learn that now. So for me, like I want to help other people, like in my team, to level up. Mm-hmm. Like I think that's why where my mission and what my what my goals are. Um, but um, in terms of like, I, if I want to make a million quid a month, no, that's that's not my goal. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm happy at around you know, a hundred hundred fifty like like a month. Like I'm content with that. Plus, like I've met so many people like that are doing um, that amount, but I also know people that are making a million quid a month, mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. ones that are making a million quid a month, they're not happy. Mm-hmm. They're really stressed. Mm-hmm. So I feel like the sweet spot is between 50 and 150. Do you know what? So, well, get this, mate. So one of my mates did 800 grand in a month, in, yeah. his, in his best month, and he actually told us when he was making about 5K, yeah. he was just as happy. Yeah. How, okay. fri- how frightening is that? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not trying to dissuade anyone from trying to become wealthy. No, but, no, no. But at the same time, sometimes it's okay to be. Yeah, 100%. you want to grow as a person. You want to grow. I always want to grow my business. Yeah. But at the same time, there's a level where actually, you know what? That money is not going to do anything else for you. No. Do you? Why do you say 100 to 150 k? Is that why is that a sweet spot for you? No, because I just know a few people like that are making that, mm-hmm. and they're really um, they're a really peaceful place. Like they're not super stressed. They haven't got huge sales teams. Mm-hmm. They, they're like they're in a good place, and I just feel like for me, like I think because I spent ten years in prison, for me freedom and peace is really important. That's so, fair enough. Right. So I feel like it comes from there a bit, mm-hmm. and like I don't want to be stressed. Like I've had like forty, fifty staff members like in restaurants. Like I don't like that business model. So for me, it's like what I'm doing now. Like I'm happy doing what I'm doing with like a very small team. Mm-hmm. so like I found my sweet spot but that's because I've been through so much shit I get that um, yeah. so like I don't want to make a million quid a month like mm-hmm. I just don't want to do that so um, yeah and because I've seen people like they've got they're, they're a peaceful place um, I think that's why I'm attracted to that I heard you say I can't remember where it was Abby, but I heard you say that actually to make more money you have to do less yeah and a lot of people think you have to do harder work yeah what do you mean by that so I got this from a book called uh, 10X is Easier Than 2X, mm-hmm. okay? And um, Dr. Benjamin Hardy wrote this, and he is a really top guy in, from America. I've been on his coaching programs as well. And what he says is, and, and what, what I meant by that is, like, if you're focused on 10 things, because usually, like, I'll give you an example. So when I opened my first restaurant, I was making, let's just say, 20 grand a month. And I instantly thought, well, if I open up another one, I can make 20 grand from there. Well, that's 40 grand a month. And sometimes we double our problems, double our staff, double our businesses thinking that um, we're going to make more money, but it gives us more problems, Mm -hmm. right? So what I was saying was that sometimes we think like the more things we do, 
the more money we're going to make. But it doesn't work like that. So the less you do, so let's just say, let's now look at the richest people in the world. We can pick five, right? How they've actually made their money is by focusing on one or two things. Mm. So when you, when I say 10x is easier than 2x, what, you, what that means is like focus on less things. Say no to a lot more of the distractions. And if you focus on one or two, you'll get further. So what happens if one of those things, so, so this is a good example for you, and I'll use myself as an example. Yeah. My business, I'm, I'm fully booked. Yeah. Great place. Happy. Always want to grow in other areas. Yeah. So one of the other areas is something else, which I'm, I'm, I'll tell you about later. Yeah. But the other part of us thinks, ads, just focus on what you're doing now because that, that makes money. Yeah. But at the same time, the other thing I'm doing would complement that business. But yeah. I'm also a little bit scared, being honest, to think, am I going to dilute that business a bit? Yeah. What would your advice be? So, so, so it, de- what is the, like, it, de- it, it all depends. Like, like, for example, um, like, I, I, I mean, co- like, when I do a YouTube video, mm-hmm. Now, from that YouTube video, we extract stuff for TikTok. Yeah. So in there, th- that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like one thing is producing two or three things, yeah. but they're very connected. Mm-hmm. right? I'm not doing a YouTube video, then I'm doing a separate TikTok video, a separate LinkedIn video. So the more mess I create for myself, sometimes it's going to be like, that's, 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 what, that's what's called. Like you're distracting yourself on too many things. But that's really, have you done it before? Have you, have you thought, have you actually done it? Have you tried it? Not the other thing. Okay, so why don't you try it for 90 days? I always say try something for 90 days and don't marry it, date it. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Like so, that. so that's a good one. So like you just date it for 90 days and you'll know. Like if it's taken away from the focus of what you're doing. But also like you, if you're full on your one-to-ones, did you say, have yeah. you got a PA? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So she will help you a lot, mm-hmm. take things off mm-hmm. your plate, mm-hmm. um, which will hopefully give you more time to do other things mm-hmm. or I, I, well I, I guess I guess what I'm asking you is yeah. if you, someone's got a business yeah they've got another thing which which will make more money yeah do they focus on the business that is their bread and butter or do they start a new venture which potentially can make more money well potentially it's not guaranteed right yeah I, I like that so so like I would focus on what's making you money mm-hmm. and then slowly play around with what you really want to do but also, what you're doing here, where, you, where it's making is it fulfilling you? Mm-hmm. Is it is it making you happy? It does, mate. I mate, you you're, you shouldn't stay away from that. Then you should stick with that and see how you can expand that. Mm-hmm. And if you're full on one to ones, then I would straight away ex- charge more prices, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. up your prices, and mm-hmm. because you're in demand, clearly. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's why how you would kind of start making more money there because you're as you're becoming more skilled and more experienced. You know, you've got more skin in the game, so you can start charging more. See, I think the problem with with the content thing that I do is, I feel like I'm at a ceiling with the price because okay. I feel like I'm kind. Of, you, there's a level in this industry where it's almost like stepping it up again. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna get a few people to stick around. It's gonna free up a little bit of time, but there's also a level where you think like people don't really charge that price you know what I mean like you've got so I'm definitely premium my service yeah but any high is a bit like well how high do you go at that point then do you know what I mean yeah you might only attract the one or two people who would pay that mm. so do you think you lean into that still yeah I mean look for me or is that purely a financial thing then isn't it I suppose no it's not it's not that it's like your, your price is part of your branding yeah right so like you have to understand like Let's just say, uh, figuratively speaking, not like I'm not having a go at anyone. So when you walk into Lidl Mm -hmm. and you buy, let's just say, fruit, apple, right? It's going to be, let's say, a pound. I don't know what the prices are. But you walk into Marks and Spencers, it might be two pound. The person that's walking into Marks and Spencers knows it's two pound. They don't have to put a little sign out there saying, I'm sorry, we're one pound more expensive than Lidl. But, you know, we're going to charge you. No, that's not a conversation that needs to be had because it's a premium brand. People know what they're getting. So your price is part of your branding. If someone's mm-hmm. working with you and they're doing what you're doing, how many of people in your niche have a YouTube channel? Probably not that many. Yeah, yeah. How many are doing podcasts? Probably that many. So straight away, your stock prices go, goes up. Mm-hmm. So the question is, like, how you position yourself. Yeah. So if you position yourself as a high-level coach, as a premium person, you will attract them premium buyers. Mm-hmm. Like, I know people... Like in my coaching space, especially in the last year, um, for example, certain people in the world, like in Monaco, 
if you go and charge 60 pound for a one-to-one -one personal training session, they won't buy it. If you charge a thousand pounds, they're attracted to that. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Right? It, it, it comes back to like, like a Rolex, for example, right? People don't buy Rolex because it gives better time. They buy Rolex because it makes them feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. So with premium offers, it's the value is in the perceived value. It's not, you can't explain it. It's not like logical. It's all like, oh, like I want to feel, I want to be part of this experience. Yeah, I get it. It's just brand, isn't it? Bro, it's brand. It, it, that's all it is. So it's brand, it's how you position yourself. And I think for me, when I like, if I'm honest with you, when I first started my coaching business from the restaurant business, I started with a high ticket offer. My, my, my price was 20K. But I yeah. feel like what gave me the confidence to do that was one, because I've been bought up in a rich household, so I was conditioned, money was whatever. Mm -hmm. Then it was, I opened up a restaurant mm -hmm. and I was like dealing with like a lot of money. And then it was like, I knew the value of my time, mm -hmm. right? And then it was like, if I'm starting with premium, I have to charge 20K because that's over 20, 12 months. And let me break this down. And when I broke it down, it was like 1,600 a month. Okay, well, that's 300 and something a week. That's mm -hmm. cheap. Mm -hmm. Like I could sit down, when you start, yeah, breaking down saying, and looking yeah. at it in a way yeah, like wait a minute I can sit down with a business owner and save them 10, 20 grand here 10, 20 grand here make them 10, 20 grand here like of course 1600 is cheap but when you look at it as 20 grand you think what? yeah so, I'm with you but, but real people like premium buyers won't see it like that they're attracted to that so it's all like who do you want to be positioned as? do you want to be the VIP guy the premium guy or do you want to be do you want to be the Marks and Spencer or do you want to be the little? Like, uh, and obviously, like, uh, and I'm not having a go at anyone, but you have to constantly challenge them beliefs. You have to constantly get into them rooms. Like when I was in that room and everyone was talking about a million quid a month, I needed to hear that to just that level up my belief just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So it's all about where you put yourself and how you position yourself as well, which helps hugely in what direction you're going to go in. Love that, mate. That was brilliant. Um, I've got one more question for you. Yeah, fire away, man. Um, Whatever. The final question would be, when, as you've became successful, okay, and, it, and again, it's, it, I know for a fact people will watch a video and they're going to have a question mark. Well, how much is he worth, right? I'm not going to ask you that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What I want to ask you is, you've came from the streets, sort of, got into street life, went to prison, yeah. came out, doing everything you're doing now, helping people. People, I believe the yeah. perception of you will be, he's a wealthy guy. Okay. Not your family, you. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. I know a lot of people in the same industry who are. Yeah. So I've got my, what I would think. Now, do you ever fear that gang life, the street life, could, like sort of having a problem with you? No. Do you no. never feel like you'd watch over your back now and out like that? No, because like I understand the streets really well, mm -hmm. and like I can stand my like my ground and 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 hold my position. And I don't I, I don't fear that one bit. Mm -hmm. Not one bit. Plus, like, I feel like because I'm always paranoid, like, I'm, I'm street smart now. Mm -hmm. Like, I can pick up patterns. Like, if I pull up somewhere, like, even when I'm parking a car, like, if I see certain movements, be like, that, that looked a bit shady. Why did that car go back twice, like, pass twice? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm seeing things what normal people are not seeing. Mm -hmm. Like, when I'm sat in a restaurant, I'll sit in a certain way. Mm -hmm. When I'm walking in, I'll walk behind someone. Like, like when I'm too close to someone, I'll step back. Like, these are all little things, like, when you're on the street, you pick up. Yeah, but people won't even realize like what I'm doing. So it's like I'm super switched on. But no, I mean, I don't, I don't fear nothing from the streets. I mean, I live in a very safe place. I don't really hurt anyone. Mm -hmm. If anything, I'm helping people. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, nah, don't fear that one bit. No. Ibi, for anyone listening or watching uh, and want to, uh, you know, they've seen something in this episode where they thought, you know what, I wouldn't mind having a conversation with yeah. him or one-to-one -one with him. Where can they find you, mate? Just Ibi Aslam on Google, YouTube, um, and obviously you'll find the links and you can reach out to me. Cheers for your time, mate. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Thank you, it. mate. Cheers. So you've made it to the end of this one. You're brave. Uh, but if you like this episode and you want to see more like this, click here and watch it.